Good morning, everyone. And uh, I like to, before to start, I like to thank um, the Open Earth Monitor uh, and as well uh, Stefan Fritz for inviting the Group on Earth Observation to give a, t a keynote. And uh, today I'm really excited to exchange with you how GEO is implementing Open Earth Observation knowledge. And further than that is the journey to user engagement. So what is GEO? GEO is the Group on Earth Observation and it is an intergovernmental partnership that is working to improve the availability, accessibility, and usage of open Earth observations, including satellite imagery, obviously remote sensing, and in situ data, to impact policy, to decision making in a wide range of sectors. We believe that full and open access to Earth observation data, information, and knowledge is crucial for today's humanitarian uh, um, social environmental challenges that the humanity is facing. So, who are we really? The Group on Earth Observation is made up to today of 116 member states. It means that each member state has what we call a geo principle, a representative within the country, within the government, advocating the usage of Earth observation data within the government, within issues that the country is facing. But not only that, you can see in the map that we still have some challenges in Africa. There are still countries where we can cover the uh, spatial presence better, but it's still quite uh, satisfactory. GEO uh, is uh, existing since 20 years now. But also among member states, we are also having a category which is called participating organization. You might recognize many of you here. Uh, you have uh, Open Geo Hub, you have YASA, you have ESA, you have many of those. We have another category, uh, which is the Geo Associates, which are the private sector that are SMEs or bigger companies that are also part within the Geo uh, community. So why all this? This is enabling us to gather this big community and making sure that Earth observation data knowledge can be open. We advocate for openness, we advocate for reusage. So it's a long way. We've seen many directors coming, each of them with a different vision. And since its birth, since the first plenary that happened in 2003 in Washington, and then in 2004, GEO was formed, uh, GEO's been, this is a very, sum, it's a big summary <laughs> of what a, a lot of things have happened. GEO's been pushing on various aspects. Some of the elements that are very important here to highlight is the, um, data sh the creation of the GEO data sharing principle in 2005, the creation of the data management principle, the geo data management principle in 2015. If I'm not mistaken, the FAIR principle were born in 2016. Uh, the geo strategy implementing geos, the global earth observation system of system, to facilitate the user to be able to discover, access, and use data. The birth of the, uh, the, the new GEOS platform in 2016, and of course, a lot of engagement with the community. This is more on the technical side. Then we have, in 2021, the adoption, thanks to the vision the, uh, of Gilberto Camara, that was our director, the GEO community adopted the, G, uh, the open knowledge statement. And the, obviously, obviously, in the open knowledge statement, we have open size, open access, citizen and participatory science, open data, open reproducible knowledge, open software, infrastructure, hardware, open education, open evaluation and diversity of knowledge. In 2022, we got the green light from our executive committee to start building the Geo Knowledge App, which we, I will talk to you later about this uh, centralized digital library. And in 2023, the data and knowledge working group became the, uh, the, the data working group became the data and knowledge working group because we are 
working on tools to make sure that open data and open knowledge can be a long vision. So how are we, what are we doing? The data knowledge working group is divided in different subgroups and different line of actions. We have the in situ data subgroup, and in situ data, we all know that he represents the, the bad child in earth observation, is the most challenging child uh, for many different aspects. So we are working on establishing a in situ data strategy, highlighting all the challenges, all the actions that GEO needs to take in order to advance the in situ data sharing, the in situ data preservation, and in situ data usage in the different applications and so forth. You're very welcome to join writing this in situ data strategy as GEO is a, an inclusive group. We're working on what we call a verification tool. It's a tool to allow uh, GEO activities, GEO members, GEO participating organizations to understand how fair compliant they are. But we've talked before, I've talked before about the geo data management principles. We have done a crosswalk among multiple of those principles about the geo management principles, the fair, the trust, the care. And so this crosswalk allows us to understand no matter which principles you're using, where you stand. And then, uh, very pleased to see Joanne in the room, we have the GREX, which is the tool to to, that uh, is built um, to understand what are the requirements from GeoWorld program activities in terms of in situ data. What is it that is needed but is not ex existing or is existing but not yet openly available? We have a, a data sharing data management principle subgroup that is also looking at, again, the subgroup, the data management principles plus the crosswalk. We've been implementing uh, the data. Uh, management principle implementation guidelines. How do you implement them? We have a self-assessment tool, how compliant you are to these data management principles, and a series of what we call dialogue series to engage the, the community, to make sure that we grow on the uh, adopting the data sharing and the data management principles together. It's a part. Um, Further than that, we also have a subgroup that is looking at the law and policy subgroup. The law and policy subgroup is looking for um, more carefully on the data licensing, the data licensing guidance. What does it mean, implementing or not, open data license? And so, not only that, we are aware that the community is a large needs guidance, need support, and need capacity uh, building and understanding what are the consequences if I don't implement a specific open data license uh, in my data, in my application? And so we are about to launch a series of engagement to make sure that the community can work together. But uh, so all this is uh, at the benefit of the community at large. A geo, we have what we call a geo work program. Uh, since its birth, there's been many what we call flagship, initiative, community activities, and so forth. And these activities within GEO have been developing a large amount of mature or different uh, level of maturity applications, solutions that are addressing our world problems. We are now to walk in into what we call the post-2025 strategy, and by the way, there is a call for proposal that is ending the 31st of October. Let me share it with the community as this is uh, uh, valuable to, to all, of, all of you. Uh, it is very important to strengthen this uh, partnership, which I believe is uh, extremely valuable. So in the GEO World Program activities, we are tackling domains that are related on food security and agriculture, weather and disasters, water and land sustainability, climate, urban and energy, ecosystem biodiversity and carbon management, and One Health. And out of these domain-specific activities, there is a tremendous knowledge that has been developed over the past years and is still in the, in the process of being developed. And therefore, 
we came up in 2022, again, I'd like to stress, thanks to the guidance of Gilberto Camara, on his vision about open knowledge to push it, the geo community to not only um, endorse the open knowledge statement, but implement it, we started to build the Geo Knowledge Hub, which is an operational platform today. So the Geo Knowledge Hub is based on full open source solution, which is Invenue RDM. Invenue RDM is the, based on the uh, open source community behind led by CERN. And the father of Invenue RDM is um, the same father of Zenodo is Lars Nielsen, it's an amazing guy, an amazing community, and we are truly excited to be part of this uh, solution. Obviously, the solution was not designed for Earth observation community, and so we, we are adding a number of functionalities to the Invenue RDM that is specific to the Earth observation community to have the GeoKnowledge app. We believe that to implement open knowledge, data, tools, methods have to be open and therefore we have open knowledge. How? We want to open what is available, make sure that member countries are aware that applications exist to respond to food security, to disaster response, to biodiversity, um, and so forth, by knowing what is already existing and by endorsing, using, and preserve it over time to recreate on it. So in the Geo Knowledge Hub, there is a, a, a concept that is extremely valuable. By engaging with the community, we've seen this is a, a game changer in how we share open knowledge. When we have an application, let's say crop monitoring uh, um, application, we need data, we need tools, uh, algorithm, code, user stories, software, and everything is pre-packaged in what we call a knowledge package. I, I will show it to you live in the GeoKnowledge app. So the user that is getting into the GeoKnowledge app and is looking for an application responding to food security is not only able to find publication or the software or that is in GitHub, or the data that are somewhere else, everything is pre-packaged and easily to uh, learn, discover, and reuse. Everything has a DOI. Either the knowledge resources that are the single um, elements in situ data tools, uh, algorithm, code, and so forth, but also the knowledge package itself, the application itself. Obviously, Inside the knowledge package, we can have documents, code, data, videos, everything that is necessary for the end user to fully understand the application and reuse it. So let me, this is just a screenshot, but I'd like to move to a live demo um, for uh, showing you what, how is really the GeoKnowledge app functioning. Okay. This is uh, the, so this is the Geo Knowledge Hub. We have gkhub.earthobservation.org. Um, it is a simplified user interface. We have feature communities. We have a number of communities uh, with whom we have collaborated that are our actual data pro uh, knowledge providers. Um, I will go more in detail. We have avail, uh, engagement priorities, so I can search for applications that do respond, for example, to the new urban agenda, to the Paris Agreement, to the different sustainable development goals, or the Sendai framework, the latest package, upcoming training and events, and so forth. But let's focus on how I would like to look for the application that is probably responding to uh, an SDG that is life below water. So I'm going into the sustainable development goals and I select life below water. And I'm prompted with a number of results. On the left side here, you can see that we can choose either to look at available existing software with different uh, specificity, web portal, Jupyter notebooks, or uh, different uh, elements. We have data sets, okay? We're talking here about DataCube. 
the different publication, video, lessons, user stories, or if we scroll down to which GeoWorld program activities these uh, resources belong. And also the target audience. Who am I? I'm a spatial ecologist, or I'm a coastal ecosystem research, and so forth. So I'm more interested to know what are the existing knowledge packages, the already pre-compacted uh, applications. And I'm going to select, for example, this one from Digital Earth Africa, monitoring mangrove extents in Africa using the Digital Earth Data Cube. So I'm prompted with the page about the application itself. We have the citation, the description, and as I was trying to uh, show you uh, before, all the applications have the different ingredients that are key for the end user to learn about everything about this application. We have the software, so uh, the notebook, the cloud computing environment. We have the publication about, this is about the sandbox. We have the data sets. We have the training material. It's a lesson, we can see it here. And we also have user stories, how users somewhere have been uh, benefiting from this application. But obviously, a portal remains a portal and will not go far if we don't have a community behind. And the community is the knowledge provider, which has been building this application or even the, the, the users behind. And so we have implemented a number of functionalities that are Okay, I'm interested about this uh, application. I need training. And this will get directly in the hands or the mailbox of our knowledge provider, or you're keen to ask a specific question to the provider. We have the different engagement priorities, the area of where this application has been built, so and it's important to understand whether it is fit for use for another area or so forth. The target audience, and obviously the DOIs and the, the, the ways to uh, share it across the entire uh, network. This is valid for all applications th that are within uh, the Geo Knowledge Hub. I'll switch back to the presentation itself. And uh, thank you. Um, so where are, we, uh, where are we are? We are working on three lines of actions. We are working on the content, to make sure that content from the GeoWorld program activities, but also from participating organizations, and as a large, we're not blocking anyone, it's, we're an inclusive uh, work, uh, group, um, is, being within the, is being recorded and available within the GeoKnowledge Hub. We're working on a parallel line with development, engaging with the community and hearing what are the additional functionalities that we need to consider. And uh, you have met Felipe Carlos last year at the Open Earth Monitor Workshop in Bolzano. He came to uh, share the advancement of the GeoKnowledge Hub, but also the most uh, fascinating part, for, at least for me, <laughs> is the user uptake. How are we making sure that these applications that we are all building to save our planet can get easily in the hands of the users somewhere in Congo has the same problem of Brazil? And so our colleague in Congo can learn, take this application, readapt it to his or her own country, and accelerate the impact. So content-wise, we have now 154 knowledge packages for 816 resources. Again, remember we started working, uh, really implementing, operationalizing in 2022. Uh, who are the activities that are now present within the Geo Knowledge Hub? A lot of logos, you might recognize GeoGlam, uh, Digital Earth Africa, Geo Mountains, and so forth. From participating organization, FAO, Space for Climate Observatory, AFL, from the EuroGeo uh, project. You have a lot of different packages from these uh, uh, communities. We want to empower and democratize the knowledge share, the knowledge reuse, and the knowledge creation. And so we started to engage with end users. We have the added value that GEO has member states. 
and member states, we know what are the problems that the different countries experience. And so we started to uh, create webinars uh, on food security-based applications. And what we have experienced with four different webinars, we had a total of 240 attendees from 61 countries, from 150 different organizations. These are our users. And they, they were absolutely excited to learn about the existence of this application and they could tap into this centralized digital library and being able to reuse it. We also had a, a workshop on the GeoGlam capacity development good practices. Um, we're keen also to not do it only in English. We've seen the language is an important element to be overcome because it could be Spanish, it could be Chinese. Our colleagues in China have been translating some of these documents for their usage. We also had an engagement about the FAO Vapor, water productivity, and this also was a quite a success. Only one webinar, 82 attendees from 38 countries, 56 uh, organizations. Now, be, behind the numbers, which don't say much, um, what we have seen is that 100% were excited, they really approved. They want us to continue the webinars. And the 77% was the first contact, which makes it even more interesting because it means that the, out there, there are people who do, did not know about the existence of so much of wealth, of application, of data, of knowledge, that we were listening the last three days is just uh, uh, fantastic. So some Quote from some of the attendees helped with background knowledge, data collection, and this understanding as well the uncertainty of the data. Nice to see there is a centralized place that connects the different applications. Now, where are we going next? We want, and we heard last week we were in China, we organized the Open Data, Open Knowledge Workshop. Um, and it was obvious. There are a number of actions we need to take. The first is the Geo Knowledge Hub, the open knowledge for youth. The uh, youth who organize their session want open knowledge to empower youth in countries, anywhere, not only in Europe, in Africa. We had um, um, Ledvin, the girl from uh, Zimbabwe, absolutely vocal, reach out. And definitely collaboration with universities is critical. But also, we heard national geos. National geos are entities that are forming to uh, be vo even more vocal within governments that a lot of issues can be, so can be addressed by Earth observation. Solved, that's where we're working. And so the Geo Knowledge App could be one of the tools to make sure that governments have the right ingredients, the right existing application out of their hand in an easy uh, way, without so many bottleneck. And so we are super excited about this uh, evolution of implementation of open knowledge. It is open, it's definitely a community effort, it is on demand approach, and GEO is there to support the community. There are a number of new features we are implementing. Uh, we have seen that there are a number of uh, uh, applications that are very valuable, but they are not fully open. And so what shall we do? We thought that could be valuable to have a marketplace for SMEs to host their uh, closed or semi-closed application, but to let the user know this is existing in case they want. The link checker to make sure that there are no links that are broken and the knowledge provider can get information. The social link uh, login support file previewer improvements, so to preview documents or videos. Content recommendation is like, oh, you might be interested about something else, an email service, a mobile experience improvement, and inclusion of the focus areas that are defined by the new Geo World Program activities. We're very keen to strengthen the collaboration with Open Earth uh, Monitor. We Absolutely, I was fascinated to be here, and again, thank you for uh, uh, having me here. There is so much we can uh, in, uh, integrate together, and uh, absolutely convinced that 
there is so much content that can be still enhanced and make sure that is again in the hand of the end users. And uh, with this, I'd like to thank you.